Let me read to you our text for today's devotional, God's Word for today. In the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 17 to 20. And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Also many of those who are now believers came, confessing and divulging their practices. And a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. We learned that the seven sons of Sheba who tried to imitate Paul by using the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to cast out the evil spirit were humiliated. They came out from their houses naked so that when people saw that, they were fearful. They were humiliated so much that when people saw him or saw them, fear came upon them who witnessed the humiliation of this exorcists. Even all the people in Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks who heard about it, were fearful. This had prompted the believers to renounce their wicked practices of magic arts and divinations. There was really fear that gripped the hearts among God's people, the new believers. So they came and they humbled themselves and they were confessing and divulging their practices. It has initiated what happened, what happened to the seven sons of Sheba that were humiliated. This scene and all the miracles that Paul did had initiated and prompted the new believers to divulge and renounce their sinful practices. A great number of magic arts practitioners brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. The total value is 50,000 pieces of silver. Maybe in our time today, if this were silver drachma, the value would be more than $10,000 today or even more. Now, this situation and this description had given us an idea of how the people were really gripped by so much witchcraft during their, their time. It demonstrated that the people of Ephesus was saturated with paganism as part of the Roman Empire. They even worshipped the Roman Emperor. They even had household idols and city gods and was known for the temple of Artemis or Diana, where people will go there and worship and they're, they're in this temple. The prostitution was practiced as an act of worship. So the culture of witchcraft, which attracts demons and Jewish exorcists, was prominent in the city of Ephesus. But sometimes people are just waiting to rescue, for rescue to hear the truth. So let's be tolerant. Let's be patient because some people do continue to practice witchcraft and other idols, um, kind of rituals, because they don't know. They are just waiting to hear the gospel. They were ignorant because nobody told them the gospel until they heard Paul preaching and saw the power of God through him that they realized that they had to repent of their practices and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's remember that Paul said in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, that faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So let's be patient. Let's be understanding. Let's always give people the benefit of the doubt because some of them continue to do what they are doing, especially in their belief because they are ignorant. They don't know the truth. Isn't it that many of us were like that before? We act like them, or we acted like them, we believe like them, 
we behaved like them, it's because we didn't know the truth just as yet. So let's be patient with them. Let's understand them that they come from that background. So unless they hear the gospel, that's why we need to pre preach the gospel to them because faith comes by hearing and hearing only to the word of God. Isn't it that Jesus said in John 8, 34 to 36, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Why do you practice sin? Why do you practice idol worship? Why do you practice witchcraft? Because they are slave to it. Until their eyes are open and they know the truth and they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. There is freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what an amazing sight here that a large number of them, new believers, they were bringing their books and all those artifacts for witchcraft and they renounce it in public that they abandoned their old beliefs so they burn their books in public for everyone to see because they really had proclaimed to the world that we don't believe this anymore and we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ like the Thessalonian believers they turn from idols to serve the living and true God Paul even wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.17 what will happen to those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me read what he writes here in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Yes, because they had found a new faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they desired to leave the past behind. They will burn the books, all those paraphernalia for witchcraft. They want to bury it in the past. They have burned the bridges behind. The new has come. One could not claim that he loves the Lord and practice sin at the same time. Could he? John said, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. A truly born-again believer who has already the life because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, because he's truly born again, will not continue practice sinning. He might sin because nobody's perfect. He might commit mistakes because he's still human, but he does not love to wallow in sin. There's a big difference to somebody who commits sin and somebody who is practicing a sinful lifestyle. If somebody will say, I believe in Christ, and then he loves to continue his sinful practices and lifestyle in the long run, if he's not going to repent and change from his wicked ways and these sinful practices, we have the reason to doubt, is he really true? Is he really a born-again believer? Because this is what John said. Nobody who is born of God will continue to practice a sinful lifestyle. So what does this mean for us today? Today, what we can learn from these new believers at Ephesus is that we need to confess and repent and renounce the besetting sins before us. Let's uproot it from our lives, whatever it is. Because the Lord is not pleased if we continue to practice our sinful lifestyle. As the saying goes, if you love flowers, you must hate the weeds. You cannot be a, a good gardener if you grow weeds and flowers in the same plot together. If you, if you love the flowers, you will hate the weeds. You cannot allow the weeds to continue growing in the garden in your heart. So let it be that we will be like these believers. They prove how they repented of their sins, how they desire to, to live a new life, how they desire to please God by burning all the paraphernalia, the books, because they want to leave it behind. May God will work in our hearts 
that we will be motivated. We will have that kind of desire in order for us not to be pulled back by the sinful lifestyle. God wants us to move on. God, does, God wants us to burn our bridges behind and reach forth unto the things before. If anyone is in Christ, if you are new in Christ, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful example of the believers that they were really truly repentant because they burned their books and everything about witchcraft to mark the repentance, to show that they have confessed and truly repented of their sins, Lord. Lord, if ever there's anybody who is practicing and continue to live a lifestyle that is displeasing to you, help him, Lord, to have the grace to forsake all this and live a new life. Thank you, Lord, that your word is powerful. Thank you that the Holy Spirit, who is our strength and power, you can help us, Lord, to live the new life, and change to become more like Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you.